So happy 51st birthday today to one of the co-founders of Cirque du Soleil. Of course, I'm going to have trouble pronouncing his name. He's French, French Canadian from Quebec. Give it a try, Guy, and I'll tell you. Guy Laliberte. Guy Laliberte. That is perfect. You did a good job. Guy Laliberte. Yep. Born September 2nd, 1959, is 61 today. Canadian billionaire, businessman, and poker player. He uh, he used to, as a kid, he used to do performances in the streets in Quebec. He would do stilt walking and fire breathing and all kinds of things. And had this collection of friends that would raise money as as street performers. And his parents had taken him to um, to the Ringling uh, Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus when he was a child, right? When he was a child, and so he he was fascinated with this. And then he ended up reading a biography about P.T. Barnum, and he always had it in his mind that he liked to do these performance things. Uh, he started doing the street performance things and some acrobatics and so forth and became friends with lots of other street performers and made some money, played the harmonica or accordion and so forth. And, um, and kind of just always had the fascination with it and would do it to make money on the side. So he goes off to college. He, um, he comes back, gets a full-time drop job at a hydroelectric dam in Quebec <laughs> Wow, that's not, a light year away from Cirque du Soleil, right? Decides it's not for him. So he goes back to street performing. And so in 1984, he and a buddy of his, Gil St. Croix, put together this small group of other performers, street performers, and developed what they called Cirque du Soleil. And it was really just initially done, the, the Canadian uh, government, the government of Quebec, wanted them to do... Um, some sort of performance for the 450th anniversary of Jacques Cartier's discovery of Canada. Now, here's one of these odd things, John. We talked about Cartier earlier. Here's Jacques Cartier, right? Mm -hmm. Interesting overlap, but I know you didn't plan that. (laughs) No, I know. First of all, I didn't know that somebody, I I, I bet if you asked me, or anybody asked you who discovered Canada, would you have said Jacques Cartier? No, no. (laughs) Lewis and Clark, no. (laughs) (laughs) Lewis and Clark did. Right. So the Cirque du Soleil was born. It was set up, as I said, as a one-year project. But it was so successful, Quebec wanted it to start touring and go to other provinces. And and um, and uh, so they, they did that. The uh, the name Cirque du Soleil means Circus of the Sun, which uh, Guy Laliberte came up with while he was in Hawaii. He said it reflect, reflected on the notion that the sun stands for energy and youth. And that's really what he wanted the circus to be all about, energy and youth. So as we know, Cirque du Soleil from 1984 on has grown into this huge international operation. Um, they are on five different continents. It employs approximately 4,000 people in 40 different countries. The estimated revenue each year exceeds $810 million uh, U.S. So it's it, and if you you can't go to Vegas without tripping over a Cirque show. I mean, how many we we've seen? How many Cirque shows have we seen in Vegas? Um. There are at least three or four that are always... Actually, it's a lot that's playing. It was Love. It was the one at New York, New York. There was the Michael Jackson one. Um, we've seen the, the water one. water one. The yes. Humanity. Zoom, well, that one we've seen the most. That was with your hostess of the mostest, Edie, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Is everybody sexy tonight? <laughs> The last time you and I saw it, I think you and I could have been performers. I think we counted. We've seen it 11 or 12 times. It was always a ticket we could get. We could guess, yeah. <laughs> Although that was so, Brian's first time seeing that particular right. one. Um, yeah. <laughs> so in 2015, he sold 90% of the stock in the company, but he still remained involved. And then he decided, now he's only he's, he's 61 years old, he decided he was going to be a world champion poker player. So he went out to Vegas, the Bellagio. He won one poker tournament over close to $700,000. And he's played now in a number of these different poker tournaments. So he's still got his hand in Cirque, but now he decided he's going to be this poker player. And then he did a, um, they said he's lost more money than anyone else in the world on online gaming. So he also does these online, you see these things on TV or whatever with these online electric games. Guess how much he lost. Okay, I'm just going to throw a number out. I'm going to because of Cirque and everything. I'm going to say he's lost about three million dollars online. And you'd be way off. Higher. He, he's lost thirty-one million dollars on online gaming. He plays these six different games. They said he's lost more money online <laughs> than any other person in the world. Imagine losing thirty-one million dollars on this. No, I can't. I can't imagine losing five. You know. You know how you and I are about this, right? Right, you debate whether you're going to put a 20-inch in it. Yeah, yeah. 
So aside from that now, so he's done all this. This He's a man after your heart here. He's also was Canada's first space tourist. Yeah, I'm showing a picture that you gave me of him now is uh, in a suit that looks um, possibly Russian. Was he was he somehow sent up by the, by the Russians? I believe he went with the Russians. It was okay. in 2009. Okay. And, uh, and the Canadian government found out about it. He was trying to do it based upon he was going to he said he was doing some sort of um, uh, nonprofit work to talk about water and the environment and so forth. And the Canadian government called BS and charged him 90 percent of the value of the trip in a tax. So, <laughs> He's going to analyze the oceans from orbit. <laughs> right. Hey, he got a lift, though. He got, went to orbit. I like that. He also bought a little French island in Polynesia, French Polynesia. And this was in 2007, and I found this one to be quite funny. He said, with all that's happening in the world, and this is in 2007, I said to myself, I'd like to have a place in case there's a pandemic or an all-out war. I could just bring people and bring family, and we'd all be protected on this little island. So he had an island. Uh, he has an island out there. I wonder if he's there now. It didn't, it didn't say. He did get busted for growing pot. Um, I believe on the island, <laughs> he had lost a bunch of money. He said he was. He said the cultivation was really just for his personal use, but they said there was quite a bit of it. And uh, <laughs> he was more. recognized. He was recognized in 2004 as one of Time Magazine's hundred most influential people. And in 2007, he was named an Ernst and Young World Entrepreneur. And uh, it just seems like kind of a kind of a guy you'd want to hang out with and have a have a cup of tea or a drink or coffee. And I, I, it sounds like he's had quite a ride. Cool guy. pretty uh, Very cool guy. And one thing I would definitely ask him, um, you know, the unique thing about Cirque du Soleil was there were no animal performers. And I wonder if that was a personal... Um, you know, I didn't realize that. Is that some? Did you read that Yeah, it's, it's, it's all acrobatics and it's all human, but you, you, I, I've never seen a show with an animal performing. And I wonder if that's something that he was passionate about um, from his days of being in love with the circus because even that's a great question well even we we all know that even as well be as well treated as many of the animals are in the care of something like a wriggling brothers circus before they were no more it's still an animal in captivity it's being trained it's a lot of stuff and there were always objections to that so the circ thing was always the coolest thing because they didn't involve um animals at all 